Hi everybody, um, this is Elizabeth with Live Simple, Live Free, and um, I wanted to share with you some things about my trip up to Maine, a little bit about my dad's memorial, and the adventure that I had on the way home. Well, I just got back, um, oh, I guess about a week ago, from two weeks up in Maine. Um, we needed to um, get some people together and, you know, do the memorial for my dad. Um, I was very glad to see my sister. And it was actually really lovely um, how the whole thing um, turned out. We had some family come in um, and just friends that gathered together. And I'm not going to show clips of the whole group of people. Um, I It's a very emotional time, and I didn't really stop and get permission from everybody to uh, to put it on a video. Uh, there are a few things I will be very glad to share, but um, I, I just want to be uh, really respectful of them. And I also just really tried to let myself just be in the moment um, on that day. And so... Um, my dad had uh, picked out with my sister uh, the little beautiful box um, that his ashes were put in and um, that uh, we could just set into the ocean and it just gently floats away and then it dissolves and just kind of sinks down into the water. And I thought that was actually just a really wonderful way to be able to take his ashes out to sea. My dad was in the Navy. Um, he loved it, and he was also um, chose to live by the ocean for a lot of his life. So I think he really loved the ocean. So um, a friend of Dana's, my sister's, a, a good dear friend, um, her brother had a lobster boat. And so we all gathered together, and I handled getting in at that boat pretty doggone well. Uh, we took chairs, because, you know, it doesn't come with seats, <laughs> and we took chairs, and everybody kind of gathered in the boat, and then he took us on just a really lovely trip out beyond all of the islands and stuff in that part of Maine to where we were looking right out onto the Atlantic. And um, my nephew, he's got nice long arms and good balance, and so when the time came, he just very, whew, I might cry a little bit. It was really, it was really sweet, so... It's, it's just peaceful tears. <laughs> but anyway, my nephew just set the, the box in the water and it started just to float out. And, it, and the way the current was and everything, it just went right out into the Atlantic. And um, so I had uh, taps ready on my phone. There was a bit of a delay because I forgot that my hearing aids were hooked up to my phone. So I was the only one hearing it and everybody's kind of looking at me and then <laughs> Um, my other nephew pointed out that I probably had it on Bluetooth. So anyway, I very quickly got that unhooked. And so as as we watched the box just kind of bob gently out to see, um, it taps played. It was beautiful. And then we, um, I had found verses to the song taps. Uh, people, you know, taps itself is a bugle call, a military bugle call. Um, for like the end of the day and it's used often at military funerals and um but there have been words put to it and so i took three of the verses that i found and everybody had a piece of paper and had the words on there and then after the bugle stopped playing we all sang those three verses they were just absolutely beautiful
Day's dawn, gone the sun, from the hills, from the lake, from the skies, all is well, safely rest, God is nigh. Go to sleep, peaceful sleep, may the soldier or sailor God keep on the land or the deep safe in sleep thanks and praise for our days neath the sun neath the stars neath the sky as we go this we know god is I almost made it all the way through <laughs> without crying too much. But we just watched that little box just floating out into the Atlantic and we were all there together on that boat and then, you know, everybody I just hugged my sister and cried really a lot and then I hugged my cousin and my little grandniece wasn't really sure about everything but she saw everybody else crying so she was crying too and it was so sweet and it was a it wasn't a, a a a hard, awful kind of crying. It was a loving, peaceful, gentle sorrow, and um, it just was a really beautiful, a really beautiful um, little thing we shared a lot with each other about Dad. And you know, my cousin, had, of course, just loved him, and she'd known him. She's older than we are, so she'd known him, um, you know, all of her life, of course, and. Um, and then we all just enjoyed the boat ride and enjoyed each other and went back to my sister's house and um, she had lobsters there. I have no idea how to open a lobster. <laughs> it was kind of laughing because <laughs> sometimes I grabbed the wrong part and somebody had to real quick <laughs> help me. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was just delicious, but I had to get lobster cracking lessons. <laughs> so it was, it was really just a very lovely visit with everybody. Um, and uh, so glad I got to see them. Um, just uh, the time I had there with Dana, um, I want to show you her newest greyhound. Um, one of her greyhounds uh, passed away, and so she got another one. They've rescued greyhounds for many years. And she calls this the cockroach, I think, but it's so cute how Monica, the greyhound, is laying in her bed. I just had to show you that. And then one morning, Dana and I found time and we just went to the beach there in Maine. And the tide was out, so you can see that I'm a little far away from the actual waves and stuff. It was a kind of a gentle day. But, oh, the air just felt so good and just the, that wonderful salty sea air. And um, it was a very peaceful day there. Um, just people walking around and I just absolutely just enjoyed just sitting with her there on the beach for a while. Um, while I was there, um, I went to several quilting groups because she's really involved with quilting. And uh, one lady had a whole bunch of these neat old crystal beads and stuff. And so she wanted us all to use whatever we wanted. So I made this necklace. <laughs> I like it. Also, while I was there, uh, Dana and I, um, she she's so good at quilting. And she had a wonderful pattern and she let me pick out from all of her fabrics. And I was able to make this bag. It's a, a big shopping bag, a quilted shopping bag. And um, so I enjoyed that. It was really cool. Of course, I'll be showing you pictures of it here. <laughs> um, she had an opportunity. We went to a big, huge quilting show. It's more like an art gallery. People are amazing 
what they can do with fabric and thread and colors and stitches and it was gorgeous and I don't think I can take video there and then show it I think it's kind of a copyrighted situation but if you ever get a chance to go to a quilt show they're amazing and um, she was able to make arrangements um, to get herself finally an actual long arm now for quilters they know what this is it's it's a big sewing machine huge where you can just roll your quilt onto it and then you can just sew a whole big section with this movable arm and it'll even follow patterns and all sorts of stuff and then you unroll a little bit more and roll up the part that's done anyway you can just beautifully do a big quilt um i I'm going to probably take my quilt I've been working on that is too hard for me to quilt on my machine and see if I can find somebody at a quilt store who has a long arm and just pay them to quilt it. If I'd had my quilt up in um, Maine, I'd have just had her quilt it, but you can't really carry a great big quilt on a plane very easily. So she was thrilled to death to get this. It was a wonderful buy and, and um, it's sturdy and it's doing a great job. So I'm just thrilled for her because I know that she loves that. You know, I, I love this huge hydrangea bush there. I just had to show this to you. That thing has just, it's old and incredible. And every year she pulls, picks hydrangeas and puts them all over her house and they dry and they're gorgeous for the entire year. And um, just looking at this view out the window is just part of being at, at my sister's house, at Dana's house. Um, she has neat, interesting stuff and just looking out at that hydrangea. I just love it. There's a store up there in Maine that I just love. It, it is just the coolest store. And um, I went ahead and got myself a little bit of a mementos and I got these two mugs because they were so Maine to me and they're beautiful. And I don't tend to buy the mugs all that often. I get more like magnets and stuff like that. But this one with the blueberries, and so beautiful. And these scenes with the the like fishing wharf and the... the, um, the uh, you know, the thing that tells ships don't come up because you'll hit the rocks. Lighthouse. <laughs> Good grief. Anyway, um, I, I loved it. So I just wanted to show these to you. They were kind of my memento, mementos uh, with the trip. So, okay. I just want to take a minute um, and tell you, because uh, I mentioned this a little bit in my Tea with Jesus, but I flew from Maine down to LaGuardia. And then from LaGuardia, I was flying down to us near us here, and Bill would come pick me up. Um, you know, he wasn't able to go up to Maine with me. And um, so I got about 15 minutes before I landed in LaGuardia, I got to be honest, I started feeling really not good, really not good. Um, and so when I got off the plane, um, I just went, LaGuardia, by the way, is huge. <laughs> I went, I went, um, to uh, just sit on one of the seats out there just hoping maybe I could kind of start feeling better and knowing that they'd probably get me a wheelchair uh, because I can walk with my walker but it is a long way to get from gate to gate at LaGuardia. Uh, it's just I think to go from gate 77 to 65 was like a 20 minute walk full out and um, it, it was going to be too much for me and um, so I knew I could get a wheelchair and they would get me down and and um, even the riding cart things only go halfway. So, uh, you know, I could make arrangements to make sure somebody could get me, you know, there. But as I sat there, I, you know, I finally, I called Bill and um, I just was not feeling good at all. My, um, it, well, I got really numb on the right side and, and um, you know, sick to my stomach. And anyway, I just thought about it and I thought, you know, it's only like, you know, it's not that long of a flight from LaGuardia to where Bill needed to pick me up. But um, if I would ever run into a real serious issue, if something actually would start going kind of really wrong um, with my history, um, being on a plane would just not be a cool place to be. Some years back, I had a stroke. And I have, through the years, had some fairly bad TIAs, transient ischemic attacks. Um, and so uh, a few of them have put me, three of them have put me in the hospital, and one of them put me in rehab for a while. And I've been doing really well for quite a while, but I was recognizing the symptoms, the numbness, the the weird vertigo, um, you know, uh, nausea, a little bit of trouble breathing, not like I'm really in trouble, but anyway, yeah, I am. Um, so I went up and asked for help. And um, <laughs> so then there's, you know, um, the 
the cops came nice, really sweet, nice, like like security people came and then they brought in, I think it was their medic people who brought in EMTs who checked me out um, and then they talked to the hospital, their EMT boss and the EMT boss talked to me and he said he really wanted to make sure I got checked out. Maybe I could still make the flight that night. It was a four hour layover, um, but he really wanted me to get checked out. So then it's go out in the middle of Queens at LaGuardia, New York. <laughs> and um, wait for an ambulance with all sorts. I had an entourage. I mean, I had nice young police officers and people from the airport and the EMTs, you know. So then I got to a very busy emergency room at, um, at, at uh, New York Presbyterian. It's in Queens there. Um, I got to say right up front, every single person was so kind. They were so nice. And uh, it was kind of a little bit overwhelming, kind of especially all by myself. And... Um, so ended up in an emergency room. It was so busy, they stuck my bed thing smack dab in the middle of the room where people had to come around me when they went through the doors because it was busy. And I, I told Bill later, I felt like the turkey in the middle of the Thanksgiving table because <laughs> I was just like, ta-da, <laughs> you know, right out in the middle of everything. Okay, anyway, to make a long story, hopefully shorter, they put me up in the stroke unit um, I was there for three days, and they ran the MRI, um, CAT scans, uh, echocardiogram, lots and lots of tests, lots of blood work. And um, finally, you know, everybody, I got to talk to like the head neurologist, this is a stroke expert neurologist, and he said he didn't see any evidence in the MRI there was any real damage. And by then I was I starting to get around better, I was walking better, I was, in, I, finally by the third day all the numbness was all gone. And um, so I, they weren't super thrilled about it, but they went ahead and let me get released. And I, um, it wouldn't have made sense for me to have Bill drive that huge long drive up there. And then what's he going to do in Queens, New York? I mean, I just, I, I don't know what we would have done with what he would have done, except for when he was there at the hospital with me. So I just asked him to stay home. I'm okay, you know. And the people were really very kind. Anyway, I called an Uber. And oh, he was a sweetheart. He did not speak any English, <laughs> but he was very nice. Took me to LaGuardia, and then you know a whole series of of wheelchairs and 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 <laughs> all sorts of you know the riding cart things. And finally, I got to the right gate. And then um, one thing that was really cool uh, was that when Bill found me a flight to come home three days later, um, it was not that much more, and he went and got me a first class ticket. I cannot tell you how good that felt because it's just, it's at the front of the plane where if I run into any issues, the people are right there and it's so much more comfortable, more room for my legs and the rest of me. And so that was lovely. And they were still having trouble getting a, a little bit of trouble getting someone to get me in the wheelchair up to the plane. Um, and this young man, I, um, if I ever see you again, Marshall, thank you. You were an absolute godsend. Um, this young man, uh, active duty uh, National Guard, sweet as he could be, Southern gentleman, just took me under his wing. He said that, he said that if it was his grandma, he wanted somebody taking good care of her. And I thought about it and I realized I was old enough to be his grandma. <laughs> but um, he made sure my my, uh, my carry-on, I, I didn't want my carry-on to be checked in because it had my, C, I have a CPAP now and it had like cords and wires and I don't want anything to get broken. So we put it right on the, the plane with me and he said now you just sit right there and when we land I'm gonna come right I'll come back up and I'll get this down and get you out there okay so he was gonna get my little carry-on back down off the top and anyway I managed to get out there and he stuck right with me until we picked up my walker from the carousel because I did check my walker in the on this flight and um, made sure that I was safely with Bill he was a sweetheart and I'm so grateful for him I just feel like that God just sent him so I was very, very glad to get home. And then when I got home, um, all that work was done in the mudroom and the floor and the, the painting and oh, and my washing machine was in the, in the new room. So I gotta admit, that was just a lovely surprise. So anyway, um, oh, I'll show you one little thing here. I thought the nurses at the hospital had the coolest Crocs. I like to wear Crocs because um, it makes my feet more comfortable. And I just got to show you this. They were very cool Crocs. <laughs> so anyway, um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my trip. 
And um, I think that was everything I kind of wanted to cover. I love you guys. And um, many people say they're praying. And I, I just deeply appreciate it. And um, so I'm glad to be back home. I've got, by the way, I've got follow-up doctor visits coming up. And I've got a neurologist appointment set up. And a pulmonologist appointment set up. And the neurologist and pulmonologist are like, like big, big shot ones. I'm grateful. So um, they, they did say that when they did the echocardiogram that, that um, my aortic valve in my heart is looking very like stable, like it doesn't seem to be like worsening at this point. They think I've got a couple more years on that cardiac valve, on that aortic, the aortic valve. So I'm trying to think of that very, it's very positive. <laughs> so, okay, well listen, I do love you guys and just wanted to catch you up a little bit and you be blessed and we will see you soon. And, um, I'm, I'm loving being around here. I'm loving being in Virginia. And I'm excited about being back in Florida when the time comes. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Live simple, live free. Bye-bye. <laughs>